this is Beth from Art by Bidel. I just thought I'd show you this beautiful napkins I found at Hobby Lobby. I run up real quick like and picked up a few things for fall for my new journal that I'm going to be making. And I found these napkins. Oh, here's some other ones too. And I thought these little raffia bows would be nice and some felt leaves to go along with everything else that I've been making for my journal. The, the video that you're going to be seeing is a video of my echo printing technique that I did. Uh, it's hard for me to do it with only just me and one hand, but I did the best that I could. So I hope that you can follow along easily enough that you can get the idea of how it's done. The papers will be shown in the next video. I won't take the time to try putting them both together. The video would be too long. So enjoy the video. We'll see you again soon. Today, I am going to echo print some papers. I have gone to the mountains and picked three different kinds of ferns, some sumac and some other things. I got some flowers at Walmart and here I am setting up my cooker that I'm going to boil my paper in. In the bottom of this, I have a cookie tray. Um, and this, this is used specifically just for dyeing papers. I don't cook my turkey in it for Thanksgiving afterwards. So there's a cookie tray on the bottom so that when I set my paper pack inside, it's not setting on the bottom. I have iron bits in here for some rust and they're gonna be alongside the edge. So I'm filling this up with water. I actually think maybe just a little bit more water in there. I think that'll be good. And then I have my, my bag of alum and I am going to just sprinkle some in. Oh, I don't know, several tablespoons, I suppose that might be. And then seal this back up so that it doesn't get wet and get ruined in my process. I also have some distilled white vinegar and let's just pour a little bit of that in there. Perfect measurements, works every time. Well, I won't say every time because I don't know if this is going to work or not. There, so I'm going to get this to boil and while it's going to boil and I'm doing this out on my porch because sometimes whatever you're cooking, your papers or whatever, uh, not your papers, your foliage, um, could be toxic. The smell that it lets off as it's boiling could be toxic. So I do this out in a ventilated area, whether it's in your garage, on your porch, wherever, but you want to have it so that you're not in, in those odors. So from here, we're going to go in the house and we're going to make a paper pack to sit inside there. So we'll see you inside. All right, here we are inside. And ideally, I would have liked to have done the whole process outside. I cannot work in that sun. The sun and I, um, we don't get along. I get heat stroke from the sun, and so I have to stay out of the sun. Anyhow, um, we have a pan set up here, and in that water, uh, we are going to add some alum and some vinegar, just like what we did out in the pot that we're, or in the cooker that we're gonna cook in. I have my 28 pound copy paper here that I'm going to use for the whole process. And then I've gone to the mountain this morning and I found some sumac. And guys, I didn't hurt any bushes or anything by trimming these off. The road crew would have went along and trimmed this back from the road anyhow. I found these types of ferns and I probably should figure out what kind of ferns, what they're called. Anyhow, those are pretty open ferns and they're tall. And then I found two other kinds of ferns. I found these ones that they're not as tall as those ones, but they're open also. And they have uh, more of a closed in frond on each one of these, more of a scalloped frond. And then I have found the lacy ones. These are my favorites. They're just delicate and ever so pretty. So I have three different kinds of ferns. I stopped at Walmart and I got a package of flowers. I have in this box two plants that I don't know what they are. So I'm going to have to look them up. And then down in the bottom are some leaves. Now I've used these leaves before and they turn out really nice. Again, I don't know what they are and I couldn't get very many of them because they had mowed along the sides of the roads and mowed them back. They were pretty eaten up by books. 
I'm not one to go tramping off into the tall grass or whatever. I kind of stick to the road and just um, get what I can from the side of the road because oh, there are rattlesnakes up there, guys. <laughs> and I don't like snakes. So, and then for later on, I have also brought home from Walmart two avocados to dye some papers. And I have some coffee and I also have some new stencils that I want to try out. So this girl is going to have a very busy, fun weekend starting right now. So see you in a few minutes. I have my ferns soaking in my alum vinegar water here. And then I have my paper over here and it is on a piece of stainless steel, a sheet of stainless steel layer my paper and then I'm going to just take my ferns and I'm going to layer them pleasingly onto my paper and these ones lay really nice and flat so I'm expecting something good out of these I will keep them trimmed so that they're pretty much within the confines of the paper we will be making a sandwich out of this so we don't want to maybe we'll just take some of these odds and ends and peel them off and put them here in this open space. Now you can do whatever you want here. Design them along the edge, leave an open spaces where you want open spaces to write, fill them up like, like I'm doing here. Um, do a wide variety of things and just, just play with it. It's just a fun project to play with. I do that and then I'll take another piece of my copy paper, dunk it in my water, lay it over top, like this, press it down, and layer more ferns again. So I could go half on, half off. If I do that, I'm going to snip off the bottom. This one seems to be sticking out too much. And then I'm gonna pull off these ones that are overhanging on the side. Yes, I'm gonna to have to find out what this fern is called. I really, as much as I like that really lacy one, it's not as easy to work with as this one is. And then we can take some more of these off from the other one and layer them right up alongside like this. And I have found that this echo dyeing, this echo printing, whatever, is very, um, oh, you just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's unpredictable. And that's okay with me. I like to surprises and see what the outcome is going to be. So as you can see, what you're going to do is, is a tedious prod, process but it's so worth it in the long run to see what you're going to have and to know that um, you did it yourself so then i'll leave that like that and i'll take another piece of paper and i'll continue building my sandwich just like this so i'll see you when i get done i have made my sandwich right here between my two pieces of stainless steel I am going to set this on a piece of cardboard that is bigger than the stainless steel and comes out to the edge of the paper so that it protects my paper. And I'm gonna put one piece on the top and one piece on the bottom. So I have this really cool sandwich, just like this. Now I need to take my sandwich and I need to wrap it and tie it together. So I am going to, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's move things around here a little bit for a second. Get you right in view here a little bit better. That I think is as good as what we're going to get for now. I am going to get some string and we're gonna wrap this up. Okay, I've changed my mind because I'm going to use this for my fall journal. I have this fabric that I, it's just a roll of cotton that I found at Goodwill and I've been tearing it in strips and using it for ruffles. And so I thought maybe I'd try dyeing some of this too. Now, I don't have any ferns on it, but I think if I just wrap my sandwich in it, that it's gonna pick up some of the color in the water anyhow, with all the rusty bits that we have. We get this. This is the worst part for me, is trying to wrap my sandwich and get it tight enough. I think one other time I didn't get my edges protected very well and so most of my pages were torn along the edge and I you know sometimes that's all right but sometimes you just want a nice edge without having to cut your paper down. 
So I'm hoping that with my cardboard on here, that this will do the trick. Okay, and then let's go the other way. And I had mentioned when I first started that ideally this is best to do outside because it's everything is wet and messy and but you do what you have to do and let's just get these edges wrapped up and then we'll tie it tight with some string and if these this fabric does nothing that's okay too we'll just do something else with it <laughs> okay so now we have it wrapped nice looking sandwich it just takes some jute string and i'm just going to start wrapping this as tight as i can and then just tie it off We'll go outside. We'll see how our water's coming. And I did end up getting all three different ferns in here. So we'll see how they all do. All right, let's take this outside. Now I wish I had an extra set of hands. Um, but anyhow, there's our water and it's looking pretty good over there. We'll just take our sandwich and very gently, we're gonna set that down in there. Take our spoon, push it all the way to the bottom. The water will get all through there and it'll eventually just stay there, but we're gonna help it stay there too. I have a brick. There we go, that'll help. Another rusty bit, set that on top. And I think that that's good to go, guys. Now, I have told Beth, we are not peeking. We're not gonna keep opening this up every five minutes to see how it's doing because we know it's boiling. So I'm going to walk away, put this lid on it, and see you in a couple hours. The three types of ferns that I used were the Eastern Hay Scented Fern, the Western Bracken Fern, and the Interrupted Fern. I will show the results of our echo printing in the next video as I didn't want to make this one too long. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.